not least, let's talk about rotational symmetry. Rotational symmetry is whenever a figure can be rotated such that the figure maps onto itself. The smallest angle that does such a mapping is called the angle of the rotational symmetry. Notice that in this definition we do say that the rotation has to be less than 360 degrees because think about it, every shape would have rotational symmetry if we allowed the rotation to be 360 degrees because every shape can be turned completely around to look like it did when it started. Okay, But some figures, like this square, notice that when I rotate it, it looks exactly the same as when it started here. And how many degrees was that rotation? Well, that was 90 degrees. So the square has a rotational symmetry of 90 degrees. Let's try out another one, okay? So you should be on question number 13. Go ahead and skip ahead to that one. All right, so does this figure have rotational symmetry? Well, as I rotate it, it does not look the same. It does not look the same. It does not look the same. Mm, I had to turn it all the way around before it looked the same again. So that's not really any rotational symmetry. So no rotational symmetry. As a review though, does it have any reflectional symmetry? Ah, it does. It definitely has at least one line down the middle here of reflectional symmetry. So one line of reflectional. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so this time my triangle is an equal lateral triangle and that's gonna make a difference. Because notice this one, if I turn it, I do get uh, something that looks the same right there, right? Okay, now the question is, is how many degrees was that turn? And I'm gonna be honest, it's kinda hard to see, isn't it? Looks like it might be more than 90, less than 180, somewhere in the middle here. So let me show you a little trick, okay? As I look at this triangle, I'm gonna count up how many times I can turn it before I get all the way back to the original starting position. So I can turn this once, twice, three times, and this is where I started at, okay? Now if I think about it, if I've gone three times and I'm back to where I started, that was a full 360 degrees. So if I take 360 and divide it by each of those three terms, that gives me 120 degrees. And that is my angle of rotational symmetry. So it's rotational symmetry is gonna be 120 degrees. Now if we wanna talk reflectional symmetry, since it's equilateral, it's definitely got the one down the middle, it's also got the one down each of the other middles, because remember all of the sides are the same length. So for reflectional, we should have three lines. Okay. All right, here we go, we're on a roll. So this one, rotational symmetry, okay? As I look at it, not the same, not the same, not the same. Oh, there it is, okay? And it looks exactly the same as before. So I could turn it twice, so 360 divided by two is 180, or I can see that it took, required me to turn it, you know, exactly halfway around. So the rotational symmetry is gonna be 180 degrees. Reflectional wise, mm, I can't divide it in half these ways. I can go through the diagonals. I can go like this and fold it, and I can also go like that. So the reflectional symmetry is going to be two lines, okay? All right, last but not least here, okay? So for D, part D here, this time I have a regular hexagon, okay? Regular meaning that all the sides are the same length, all the angles are the same, okay? So looking to rotate this one, as I rotate it, it looks the same there, okay? Now, how many degrees was that? Hmm, I think we should employ our little turn it around and see how many times we can click it around here. So here's its starting position. I can go around once, twice, three times, four times, five times, and six times. And I'm back where I started at, okay? So I could rotate this six times. So if I do 360 divided by six, that's gonna give me 60 degrees, okay? So that is a rotational symmetry of 60 degrees. For reflectional symmetry, I can definitely go through each of my points here and divide it in half. So there's three lines. Um, I can also divide it in half through each of the flat sides, so there's an additional three lines. So all together it has six lines of symmetry. Alright, 
So that is rotational and reflectional symmetry. Okay, so here's a little bit of a challenge question. Think about this. Describe a figure that has an angle of rotational symmetry of 10 degrees. So notice that all of the angles were divisible by 360, which makes sense because all of those angles have to add up to make a full turn somehow, right? So think about this. What is 360 divided by 10? Okay, well, it goes into it. Let's see here. Three times there. Bring down the 6. 36 times. So I'm anticipating that this is a figure somehow with like 36 sides because it can click around 36 times. That's a pretty crazy figure there. Okay, So kind of a cool thought there for you with the reflectional and the rotational symmetry. All right, so by now you should have been, been able to perform rotations on and off the coordinate plane. Um, you should also be able to see the difference between reflectional and rotational symmetry. So let's practice. So there's a rotations and symmetry practice to complete. Please turn that in when you're done. Um, just to kind of give you an update here. So upcoming next week, we're going to spend time on Monday and Tuesday reviewing and making sure you feel comfortable with all the transformations and then look forward to a transformations quiz on Wednesday. Have a fabulous weekend. I miss you guys. I will see you on Monday.